The New South Wales State Emergency Service is the combat agency for floods, storms and tsunamis, but members may also be involved in many other types of incidents and it is the state's most versatile emergency service. Management of these incidents is a challenge for which the SES has developed innovative solutions. On 27th of December 2018, I assisted with a multi-agency storm operation run by the SES at Barara near Sydney. The storm had dropped cricket ball sized hailstones over large parts of Sydney and so many homes were severely damaged that they were still getting temporary repairs a week later. My role was as a volunteer SES computer operator and this was my introduction to the innovative use of technology to manage emergencies by the New South Wales SES. I reported to a mobile command centre in a bus parked in a sports field car park full of emergency vehicles, personnel and supplies. The bus was connected via satellite to the SES State Headquarters in Wollongong. I was supposed to be working on a computer inside. However, the workstations on the bus were all full, so I had to go outside with an iPad and mobile phone and sit in the shade of a tree. The management system it used is called Beacon. While sitting outside, I used it to find the outstanding jobs on the iPad, then used the mobile phone to ring the householders to update their status on the iPad. The iPad connects via the mobile phone network to the SES State Headquarters. Beacon is a cloud-based application that runs from any browser, even at home. It is available on PCs, laptops, mobile phones and iPads. Beacon was designed and built in-house by a developer who is also an SES volunteer, with considerable input from other volunteers. The name was also chosen by a volunteer. This is how emergency incident management was done in the SES until 2011. A team was given an in-tray into which were put current and following jobs on RFA, which is Request for Assistance Forms. Duplication was common, field teams had to queue for jobs and situational awareness was difficult to achieve. In 2011, the paper system was replaced by a computer system called RFA Online. However, the system was unsatisfactory as it ran on the local computer and periodic uploads to the computer in Wollongong had to be run in sequence to get everybody up to date. It only ran on computers in the headquarters and the connection to Wollongong was unreliable and slow. RFA Online was replaced by Beacon in 2014. The New South Wales Police and Ambulance used a computer-aided dispatch system called Vision CAD, but to use that would have been very expensive, required extensive training, and it was lacking in full mobile features. Importantly, the SES also operated in a different way from the other services. Beacon is used to manage incidents by controlling teams, recording job details, and providing information for regularly updated reports. Beacon has a very inviting and colourful interface. This is the opening screen. Teams can be allocated on a functional or geographic basis to sectors. To manage an emergency using Beacon, you first set up sectors. If they are geographical, they are shown on a map within the application. Functional sectors might include a support sector and an RFS sector. These are used to control jobs given to support groups such as the electricity company. The ability to use sectors was a feature requested by volunteers. Next you set up teams and team members are automatically listed according to the unit managing the event. You only have to fill in a part of a name for the rest to be filled in. Each team can be individually named and have its capabilities listed. Once you have picked the team leader, his or her contact details are also shown. The tasking screen is used to allocate tasks to teams. Tasks are shown in a map that allows the incident manager quickly to see how the event is progressing and any trends. Different coloured icons represent more urgent tasks. Simply looking at the map shows the worst affected areas and how a storm is travelling. Locations of SES teams are shown on maps within the Beacon application in real time on the computers and on wall screens in the command centre. The real time situational awareness of the incident management team or IMT is greatly enhanced by this software. In the field, teams use iPads to receive their instructions and update the status of their jobs. 
No time is wasted waiting for other radio users' instructions, responses or clarifications and it's a lot more efficient. Teams are more likely to update their status and can fill out their safety forms with a few clicks online which saves them even more time. Tasks to be allocated are shown in a job register. It is easy to apply filters so that only the jobs that are of interest, such as those between certain dates, are displayed. Life-threatening situations are shown in red and other priorities can be applied. Selecting a job reveals further particulars. Each job has full details describing the necessary information and a map of its location. Notes can be added to describe progress, which is what I did in Barara. Status can be updated simply by clicking a button and adding the time. The iPads have found other uses. SES volunteers recently arrived at a remote search to find that the police had only got one map. iPads were used to take photographs of the map so that each search team could carry them and view a good sized copy of the map while in the bush. Mobile phones and iPads are now a standard part of SES vehicle equipment. SES are also operating many other systems. EOS, or Everyone's Online System, gives members access to email on common documents, applications and procedures. Beacon was incorporated with SAP to capture member details to form teams. This was developed into an automatic SMS messaging system and an activation system for units. SES continues to innovate. It has now also released two free mobile phone apps, FloodSafe and StormSafe, to increase community resilience and help people prepare for and avoid dangerous storms and floods. With these screenshots from FloodSafe, we end this presentation. If ever I was asked to name the heroes I salute, I'd never have the time to name them all. But besides the many heroes who stand tall in this old world, my favorites are the ones who heed the call. When they don the orange suits and tie their lace-up ankle boots to face the challenge some may never meet. They're the frontline troops in battles, but no rifles grace their shoulders when they face a natural disaster or some carnage on the street. They are there when we need them, these SES men and the SES girls will be there once again. Dust streaked and mud stained ember right colored suits with dirt on their faces and high ankle boots. They are farmers and plumbers, they are painters and shopkeepers. Some are living on a pension, but they turn out just the same. There are teachers on vacation, some are drivers and dirt movers, and some women fight beside their mozzie girls are just as gay. If I had ten million dollars, I would buy a million medals, and I'd hang them all with ribbons on those orange-colored suits, just to tell the world I'm grateful and I'm proud of all my heroes, in their hard hats, in their overalls, and laced-up ankle boots. So here's to the mob in the bright orange suits, in hard hats and goggles and high ankle boots. All heroes are paid with no medals to show the battles they fought and the places they go. They are there when we need them, these SES men and the SES girls will be there once again. Dust streaked and mud stained in the right colored suits With dirt on their faces and high ankle boots With 